All right, so, <clears throat> hey guys, um, we kind of stopped here uh, last Saturday with using rules for exponents to simplify expressions, go back over them. So here are your exponent rules um, versus our product rule. And what that means is if you're multiplying um, two numbers, or not numbers, variables, I guess, with the same base, but different exponents, you're going to add the exponents together. Um, so for example, if I had two to the third times two to the fourth, it would become two to the three plus fourth power, which would be two to the seventh power rule. Um, let me grab this pen real quick. So then here we have our, so the example I said was if we had two, two to the third times two to the four, it equals two to the seventh. Um, power rule for exponents. So our power rule for exponents is if you have a variable to a power and then you're going to raise it to another power. So the use of parentheses is the key here. That means you're going to multiply them together. So if I had two to the third squared, that means I'm going to do two times three, which makes two to the six. That's a horrible looking six. Okay, um, where are we at? So next, if we have power rules for products and um, quotient, so the quotient part is that if I have a number in the numerator and a number in the denominator, I'm going to distribute the power to the numerator and to the denominator. Um, just be mindful that we do not have zero in the denominator. The quotient rule, quotient means if you are dividing two numbers with the same base but different powers, you're going to subtract their exponents. So if I had 2 to the third over 2 to the square, it becomes just 2 to the 1 or just 2 because 3 minus 2 is 1. Zero exponent, anything to the zero power equals 1. If I had 100 to the zero power, it would equal 1. And last but not least is the negative exponent rule. What this says is if you have a negative exponent, it means that the number actually belongs in the denominator um, instead of in, the, in a numerator or in a whole number position. So here we have um, our example. So I have x to the 1 half, x to the 1 third. So they are same base, same base, and I'm multiplying, so that means I'm going to add them together. So that gives me 1 half plus 1 third, which equals x to the 3 divided by 6 plus 2 divided by 6, and that's because I have to have common denominators in order to add fractions together. Um, add 3 plus 2, and that gives me 5 to the 6. B, um, I have the same base. I'm dividing, so when I divide, again, common base, they already have it, so 1 minus 4 is negative, I'm sorry, 1 minus 4 should be negative 3, uh-oh, negative. negative 1, sorry, so it's negative 3 over 3, which equals 7 to the negative 1, which means that my 7 actually belongs in the denominator. And next we have um, y to the negative 4 sevenths times y to the 6 sevenths. I'm going to add them together. So negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. So my answer is just y to the 2 divided by 7. The reason why I did examples with fractions is because you guys tend to have the tendency to make mistakes with fractions. So here are some fraction problems that you can look back at. And if you have any questions, you can still ask them. Next. Um, more fractions. So we have 32 to the 1 fifth times x to the 2 thirds times meant to the third power. So we're going to handle our parentheses first, which is nothing for me to handle because my bases are different. I'm going to distribute the 3, which means I'm going to multiply each number inside times 3. So 3 times 1 fifth is 3 fifths. 3 times 2 thirds is 2 because you have 
6 divided by 3 equals 2. And now I can't combine this, so my answer, just simply clean it up. Simply clean it up using our radical, radi radical rules, um, and we end up with 2 to the third times x squared. Okay, remember that it means that if you have uh, a fraction, the denominator is your root and the numerator is your power. So that's why it becomes the fifth root of 32, which is 2 to the fifth power, um, to the third power. And when you take a root and times it by the same radical, it sets kind of the number free on the inside. All right, more fraction practice. So we have a to the one fourth times a to the negative one half divided by a to the two thirds. We're gonna clean up our, I'm sorry, I didn't finish the top. A in it, two to the third simplifies to eight to x squared because two times two times two is eight. Clean it up, we're gonna put this all together. So I have, these two are being added in a sense, but when you're adding a negative, that just means subtraction. So we have one fourth minus one half and then this is in the denominator, so following the quotient rule, it becomes um, also minus two-thirds. They have to have a common denominator. The common denominator would be 12. So I'm going to multiply 4 by 3. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. I'm going to multiply 2 by 6. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And I'm going to multiply 3 by 4. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So again, we multiply this by 3 this by 6, and this by 4. And we now can subtract. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. A to the negative 11 twelfths, which means that it belongs back in the denominator. So we have 1 over A to the 11 twelfths. Next, uh, rational exponents simplify radical expressions. So for example, we're going to clean this up. So we're gonna assume that everything represents positive real numbers, all the variables. So if we have the eighth root of x to the fourth, so that means vice versa. Remember how we talked about our denominator being our root and our numerator being our power? Well, that ends up becoming this. So we flip it. And we have our denominator is our root, which was 8. Um, and our power was 4, so it becomes x to the 4 8. So we're working backwards. 4 8 reduces to 1 half. And so we can simplify this down to the square root of x. Oh, sorry. Same thing here. So we have 25 to the 1 6 because our power is just a 1. And 5 squared, 25 becomes 5 squared. And so we're going to distribute. And 2 times 1, 6 is 2, 6. And 2, 6 reduces down to 1 third. And 1 third means the cube root of 5. All right, so we're going to clean this up. So here, we're going to make these into exponents. So we have the square root of x times the fourth root of x. So my power, my sorry, my root here. Remember, if there's no number, it's a 2. If there's no power, then it's a 1. So this is also a 1. So I'm going to turn them into exponents. So I have x to the 1 half, x to the 1 fourth. Um, they have the same base. So if they're being multiplied, I'm going to add. In order to add them, they have to have a common denominator. The common denominator would be 4. So that gives me 3 fourths because 1 half becomes 2 fourths, and 2 plus 1 is 4. So when I, when I write it back in radical form, it becomes the fourth root of x to the third. All right, let's try it with numbers. So with numbers, we have... Um, the cube root of 5 and the square root of 2. So we put them in exponent terms. 
we find a common a common denominator of their exponents and we're going to actually divide that common denominator out uh, we'll take the common denominator out and the common denominator here is 1 6 so we factor out 1 6 and we're left with 5 squared times 2 to the third so they combine underneath the radical and 5 squared times 2 to the third is 200 so it becomes the single radical expression of the 6th root of 200.